Welcome to Write Talk with Catherine and Catherine, two writers who have built their lives around words. Write Talk is a time to open up about the writing journey and be honest about the bumpy journey. By coming together and sharing, we can make each journey more enjoyable. Hello there and welcome to Write Talk. I am Catherine Lang, your host for today and Catherine Grubb is out getting some rest and relax, relaxation as we all need at times as writers. So I am going it alone, joining you on this journey of words, finding our way to be our own success because success is unique to each of us. And today I decided just to be a little bit raw with you, just to be revealing to pull the band-aid off of my own journey and show you sometimes it's not what we think it is or we, what we want it to be. See, the last several weeks, I have been struggling deeply with whether or not this is the journey for me, whether or not I am to pursue this passion of words for a living, as a living wage. And the interesting thing is that I've made a living out of words. I've made a living writing. I've written content for companies all over the, the world. I've written for national magazines. I've written for regional magazines. I've written for regional newspapers. But I still wondered, am I good enough to do this for a living? Am I good enough to live off the words that I create? Now, part of the issue for me started uh, back last year, and I told my husband, I've been telling my husband, that if he'd just give me X amount of time, I could get this done. I could make a living with my unique words. Not for the, most of the income that I have been making has come from other people, from content for other people, from social media f managing for other people but not from my own words. But if my, for them, if they were willing to pay me for those words that I was creating, then surely my words were good enough to create an income for myself and my family. So I told my husband here recently, I said, by this date, I will be making a living wage as a writer with my words. And if I'm not making a living wage with my own unique words, then I will pursue other income earning opportunities, including the possibility of getting a real job. You know, one of those that you actually get up, get dressed, get in the car, go to the office kind of jobs. <laughs> and so... I sat down and I made a great plan. If you have listened to the Write Talk show before, or if you've been to the Successful Freelance Writer website, you know that I've got this awesome whiteboard of world domination, and it's got my why, and it's got all the elements of what it is that I'm trying to accomplish, and it's got it broken down, each element, into steps that I need to take. And I also had this awesome focus folder that was showing me daily what it is that I need to be doing. So I had great plans, but the problem was I wasn't implementing the plans. I would get right up to the edge of doing what I needed to do, and then I would back off. I'd get right up to the edge of following through on all the tips and suggestions that I, was, that I had, that I had gotten from others, the wisdom that I had accrued from others that had gone on to get their success in their passion. But I would back off. Now, as I got to looking at this, I, I began to wonder, am I afraid of failing? Am, am I afraid that when all is said and done, I'm really not good enough? That the jobs that I've picked up along the way, the income that I've produced... It's just a fluke. And that's the reason the novels that I have out and the nonfiction books that I have out are just sitting there doing nothing. I'm just not good enough. And that's where I found myself about two weeks ago. I'm just not good enough. I have been going through Jeff Goins' 
uh, course, Tribe Riders, and really trying to hone in on what it is I'm trying to do and what it is I really want out of it. And also, I've been listening to webinars by Grant Baldwin and Brian Harris, who also encourage on this encourage you on this journey of uniqueness because I can't look at their success and know how to get to mine because my success is unique from theirs. I can't even look at what they're doing and know if I'm close to success because their idea of success and my idea of success are so completely different. But I can listen to them and learn from them about this journey. And that's what I was doing. I was listening. I was learning. I was kind of doing not enough, mind you. I knew it wasn't enough. But why wasn't I doing enough? I knew it was, I knew what it was that I needed to do, but I was caught up in a cycle of what I didn't need to do. I was doing what I shouldn't be doing instead of what I should be doing. And so <clears throat> in February, uh, the Lenten season kicks off for the Episcopal Church, for all churches. Um, but I, I grew up in the Episcopal Church. And I determined to, this year, uh, the tradition is to give up, to focus on sacrificing something to draw us closer to the journey that Christ took. But I know from my personal experience, if I'm focused on not doing whatever it is, then I tend to want to do it all that much more. And my goal this year was to do things, to add things to my list, to, to add a list of seven things that I was going to do. And I've been consistently trying to pursue those, to, to, to do stuff, to focus on the doing. And yet I still continued to struggle in this journey of words. Am I good enough? I was doing stuff. I was seeing results. But it was a far cry from where I wanted to be or where I thought I needed to be. I wasn't getting what I thought I should be getting, doing what I thought I should be doing. But I wasn't doing it consistently because I would get tired. I'd get frustrated. I'd get mad. Why not me? Why aren't my words being shared? Why aren't people standing up and saying, oh man, this is awesome. And so my deadline came, the one that I had given my husband. If, I, if, if by this date I'm not making a living wage, then, and then got here. And so I sat down and started sending out emails, resumes, to traditional jobs. Some involved writing, but most didn't. Most actually focused around the degree I got, which was in tourism and commercial recreation. But I was giving up. I knew I was. I mean, I'd still write. Of course I'd still write. I can't not write. It's part of me. But as far as pursuing it in the capacity of my passion, I was walking away. I've been reading The Art of Work by Jeff Goins. And I got to the conclusion, and this paragraph, these sentences jumped out at me. Maybe you answered the call, but at some point gave up. You started down the road, but decided to retire or to settle. And at some point you let go. You settled for good when you were called to greatness. I cried. I was reading this book about finding your way, finding your purpose, finding your passion, and I cried because that was me. I was settling for good. I know that we're called to be great. I know that we're called to be exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can think or imagine, but I was settling for great. As a matter of fact, I wasn't just settling for great. I was walking away from the potential of greatness. And I had no idea why. Last night, I sat there 
thinking, I'm not going to do the radio show anymore. I'm just going to walk away from that. I love doing this. I love sharing with you. I love getting connected to you on a personal way, in a personal way, because I know that sharing and being together allow us to grow in our own unique journeys. And I want to encourage you in that. It excites me to see you pursuing what it is that you're so uniquely designed to do. But I was going to walk away because of why. I, I didn't know. I didn't know why. I thought it might be because I didn't think I was good enough. And maybe that's part of it. Maybe that's all of it. But the point is... I woke up this morning and didn't care anymore. I didn't care if I wasn't good enough. I didn't care if I was talking to myself for the next 30 minutes. I didn't care if I never earned another dollar from the words that I shared. Because I'm go- I am designed to share words. I am uniquely designed on purpose for this purpose of encouraging others, lifting others up, stirring others up to pursue their uniqueness. And when I quit doing that, when I quit fulfilling what it is that I know I'm designed to do, then I am going to live a settled life. And a settled life might be good, but it's never extraordinary. And I am going to be extraordinary. (laughs) That's just all there is to it. I am going to be extraordinary. But we're going to go through those times in this journey where we don't like it. We don't like the results. We don't like the requirements. We don't like the sacrifice. But what might feel like a sacrifice to me is really just a choice. I choose to do what I know to do instead of settling down for a Netflix marathon or playing video games just to play video games or stare out (laughs) into the great unknown just because I don't want to clean up the kitchen. (laughs) I mean... We're going to make excuses, and I've been making so many of them. But I'm telling you right now that you can. Whatever your dream is, you can reach it. I went to a writer's group. It was the first time that I had really reached out to others in this journey. I went to a writer's group this last week, and one of the gentlemen in there said that if you are looking to make money, doing this then you're looking in the wrong place and I disagree I completely disagree I think that there is a wealth of income out there for those that are willing to invest in the creation of words that inspire engage and entertain people I have no doubt in my mind that the income opportunities are available to those who are willing to work at it but like anything it's not going to be an easy journey it is work it may be joy filled work because it's doing what we love it's doing what we're passionate about but it is work so I'm here to tell you right now that first you are good enough Now, you may have to continue to study and to grow and to hone that good enough until you're great, but you're good enough. Put the words down and let the words begin to grow. Plant those seeds. And second, it is possible. Whatever it is that you're dreaming Whatever image you have in your mind, getting there is possible as long as you're willing to take the steps, to walk it out. You have to do it. No one, no one will do it for you. And that is the toughest thing when it comes to success. 
because you watch other people reach theirs and you think it's because of they knew this person or they got this blessing or they got this um, step up. But you have no idea what they sacrificed in order to have that next step. And their journey is not your journey. So that's the next thing I'm going to tell you is don't compare what you're doing with what anything anyone else is doing because theirs is unique. Their struggles were unique. The journey they took was unique. The pain that they suffered to get to where they are is unique. And trust me, 99% of the time you don't want to go what they went through in order to get to where they were or are. So your journey is unique, and that's the journey that you need to take, and that's the journey that you need to concentrate on. And and finally, the final thing that I'm going to talk to you about right this minute is that you can make money writing. You can make money writing. You can make money writing. You can make money writing for other people, or you can make money using your own words. It's what you're passionate about and what you love that's going to drive you. Don't let the dollar sign drive you. Let the passion drive you. If you're not in a place where you can concentrate on just your words right now because of the income need, then look for income opportunities that allow you at least an hour a day to focus on your own words. And take that hour to focus on your words. That is my struggle, the taking the time, doing what I know to do, writing the words, sharing the words, pursuing the opportunity to write and to share the words. You're not going to do it for me. I'd appreciate you doing it for me, but you're not going to do it for me, and that's okay. You're not supposed to do it. No other person is supposed to hand me my success. No other person is supposed to build my career for me. No other person is supposed to push my book to the number one bestsellers list. I am the one driving this journey. It is up to me. Whatever my it is, and for me, it's about engaging people. And if I don't get up in the morning And talk to you like I'm talking to you right now. If I don't get up every single day and create words that engage you, then I will never get to the point that I want of engaging 100,000 people a day. It won't happen. Y'all aren't going to show up at my house. You can't find my house. (laughs) And that's part of the reason we live where we live. We live in the woods. We live in a secluded place so that we can enjoy the the creek running behind the house. But that does limit my engagement opportunities on a day-to-day basis unless I take the opportunities that have been provided to me. The Right Talk Show, the Growing Hope Radio Show, using YouTube, using a blog, guest posting. It's up to me. And it's up to you. Whatever it is that you want out of your writing career, you can get there. Stop doubting that. I don't care where you are right now. If you want it bad enough, if you truly want it bad enough, you can have it. It is said that persistence beats out natural talent every single time. So are you persistent in your writing? I know I'm not. I know I talk about being persistent. And I talk about having a hunger for this journey. And I talk of, I talk a good talk. <laughs> but it's time to stop talking. And to start doing. When I woke up this morning, I realized that I could keep putting it off. I could keep making excuses. I could keep looking for ways to procrastinate. But when all is said and done, 
when I turned around, it was going to still be there. That dream of sharing words every single day, of standing before crowds and talking about passion and purpose and pursuit of those in a bold new way. That dream of sharing stories that inspire are words that bring tears. Good tears, sometimes bad tears, but that stirred emotions. I can walk away, I can go get a nine to five job, I can bring in an income, but that passion is not going away. That passion is still going to burn in me. And if I deny it, I will become settled. And I want more than that. So how do we get to this place of more? How do I get to the consistency that I know I need? Well, one I share with you. There is nothing more important in this journey of becoming unsettled and pursuing passion than to have the people around you that can support you, the people that can encourage you, the people that will remind you that you are good enough and you need to keep stepping. The second thing to do is to keep on learning. I don't care where you are in the process. You need to keep learning. The most intelligent people in the world continue to learn, to absorb information, to grow up knowledge and wisdom and understanding. This is not just about writing, but about life in general. The books that I have right now on my list include books by uh, Michael Hyatt and Kay Arthur and um, D Dale Carnegie and Napoleon Hill um, and then some independent authors and that talk about attitude and controlling the tongue, you know, ironic since I want to make a living with words. But the idea is that I'm just stuffing information into my head absorbing, learning, growing. So you need to continue to learn and you have to keep taking action. That's ultimately the only way to be a writer is to write. I don't care how good you are. If you don't write, you'll never be a living wage writer. You'll never earn that success that you desire. So you have to have the support. You have to keep learning and you have to write. And really, you have to find a way to believe in yourself. And for me, this means whenever someone says something positive about my writing or what I've said to them and what it's done for them, then I print it out and I have it there. And when I get to these dark places, these places where I'm sliding into settled and I'm ready to quit, like uh, Jeff said in The Art of Work, then I bring these out and I review them. I read them. I see what it was that I did to inspire others. I get that feeling again, that feeling of giddy that you get when someone tells you that your words are beautiful. And I hold on to that giddiness and slowly but surely that warmth, that, with, that reminder lifts me up to the point that I can take another step. You have to surround yourselves with affirmation of what you're doing. And the more you do it, the more affirmation you get. But also the more negative you're going to get. This is a hardcore journey. It is not for the weak of heart. People are going to say nasty things about these words that you've crafted and created. But that's the nature of people. People have opinions and you have to believe so much in your own words that their opinion, although you listen because you should always listen, which is the next thing that you need to be willing, you need to be moldable, but you have to be bold in the belief that your words are valuable. And yes, you do have to be flexible. You do have to be willing to take all this learning that you're doing 
I know that's what I'm having to do. I'm taking the learning and I'm implementing it. I'm going back. I'm looking at the books that I've already released. I'm, I'm adding to them. I'm taking meat from all this information that I've gathered and I'm putting the meat into the books. And I know that in doing this, I'm making a better product, a, a stronger value for the people that I'm trying to engage. I want to give you all that I can, all the information that's going to drive you to your success. And so I'm adding to what I've already shared. I am being willing to admit, hey, that may not have been the greatest line or the greatest sentence in the history of writing. So I'm molding it. I'm shaping it. I'm becoming flexible in the plan that I have created. Yes, I have a whiteboard of world domination, but I understand that sometimes I have to give a little in order to get to that next step. You can do this. I can do this. We can do this. My success doesn't limit your success. My journey doesn't dictate your journey. Your success doesn't limit mine. As long as I'm willing to put in the work and as long as I'm willing to continue to take the steps, then I will reach the success that I desire for my life. And so will you. Connect with others. Learn something. Write something. Believe in your words. And be flexible enough to take the learning and the wisdom of others and allow it to mold you in this journey that you're on. I woke up and the day was gray. Not in my heart or in my mind, but in the clouds, in the sky. And sometimes gray days would make it really hard for me to get moving. But there was something stirring in me that said, you have to. You have to share. You have to let them know. The world. That living out a passion is possible. I, ha I was ready to quit. I was ready to walk away. I was ready to settle. But I know that I am called to something more than settled. I'm called to something more than mere survival in this journey. I am called to thrive in my unique purpose, in my unique place, in my unique words. And so are you. So together, let's take the steps. Let's pursue this dream. Let's make this passion a reality in our lives. I'm Katherine Lang. You can learn more about me at www. KatherineLang.com or over at the successful freelance writer.com. I continue to want to connect with you each and every day. I want to share in your journey. I want to understand what it is that you need and how I can help you. Connect with me and let me know. Remember, together we are so much stronger and so much bolder than we are ever on our own. So the more I connect with you and share with you, the stronger I get in my journey and the stronger you get in yours. Until next week, I encourage you to find people to share with. Write something every single day. Learn something every day. Believe in your words. And most importantly, be flexible in this journey. Until next week, I encourage you to write on. Thank you for joining us for Write Talk with Catherine Grubb and Catherine Lang. Catherine Grubb is the author of a couple of funny novels and writes a novel in 10 minutes a day and founder of 10 Minute Novelist on Facebook. Learn more about Catherine Grubb on www.10minutenovelist.com. Catherine Lang is the founder of The Successful Freelance Writer, the author of three novels, three nonfiction books, six gift books, and four e-books. Catherine Lang has been building up a career with words over the last decade and enjoys the opportunity to help others discover their own path to their uniqueness. Join Catherine Lang on the journey to grow up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. 
by visiting www.katherinelang.com. And remember, join Right Talk, same time, same place, for more ideas, tips, and stories about growing up a writing career. Until next week, keep on writing.